Hello, this is Dave here, back with another look at Mass Effect Andromeda. This time we're seeing how the game compares on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. Here we've got the PC version running at 4K resolution, maximum settings, super sampled down to 1080p resolution, and of course that's running with temporal anti-aliasing. The result is we get the very best image quality possible, and although we're running at 30fps here, the level of clarity and indeed cleanness with regards to image quality is a definite step above the console versions. But just how much better is the PC game? Or to put it another way, how close does the PS4 and Xbox One come to matching the ultra high end maxed out PC experience? Well, let's start with PC and PS4. Image quality wise, there's no doubt about it. The super sampled image provides a much cleaner presentation than on console. That said, PS4 version isn't bad. The use of temporal anti-aliasing and native 1080p during gameplay provides a very clean image. It's not perfect, but there are a few complaints here. Now the cutscenes do operate at 900p, so image sharpness does take a small dip over gameplay. And this is apparent when comparing to PC, where the resolution can remain fixed, whether it be gameplay or the majority of cutscenes. I say majority because there are some cutscenes that operate as pre-recorded FMVs using in-engine assets. And unfortunately, these are fixed to 1080p across consoles and PC. So regardless of what resolution you're outputting, you can't extract any more detail when playing the game on a computer. Thankfully, these cinematics aren't used all that often, at least in the opening few hours of the game. And in terms of image quality, when using an ultra high-end card like a Titan X Pascal, even on the 1080p monitor, there are clear gains to be had using super sampling while targeting 30 frames per second. It's an easy way to get a boost from running the game on PC, but it's when looking at the other visual aspects of the game where we see an impressive graphical upgrade. The game utilizes DICE's Frostbite technology, and as we've seen in other titles such as Battlefield 1, there are some significant upgrades with regards to detail across characters and the environment. The most obvious upgrade we noticed is that the level of detail in the environment has been increased, both in terms of geometry complexity, along with higher resolution, higher quality normal maps and textures. This can be seen in the environment with regards to smoother, more defined rock faces, along with generally much better looking incidental details, such as the rough surfaces on the ground, or indeed details across distant buildings. Texture quality is also improved too, giving the entire scene a lot more clarity. In addition to this, there are extra objects on screen, such as additional rocks and indeed foliage, which helps to flesh out the environment and add an extra level of complexity to the general scene. It's a noticeable upgrade when compared directly with consoles, and these improvements are also deployed in the game's interiors as well, with objects appearing more rounded and more refined due to increased geometry, high quality textures and normal maps. The same thing is also true of the characters as well. Take a look at the close-ups and we can notice extra fine details on the character's skin. Pores are more visible along with other blemishes. And this is due to a combination of higher resolution texture work, improved image quality via super sampling, and things like high quality normal maps. In fact, when taking a look at the characters' uniforms, we notice increases in geometry and higher quality normal maps to create more refined, more precise detailing. Things that appear a little blocky on consoles appear visibly more rounded on PC. This isn't something that you'll just notice in a like-for-like -like comparison. I started off playing the game on consoles, and immediately when playing on PC, I was initially surprised at the level of visual quality on offer. It looked better than what I remembered it looking on consoles, and that's certainly true when taking a look at a side-by-side -side comparison. We're getting more than just a refinement in many areas. 
so the core graphical assets are improved on PC. And I can also say that additional refinements have been brought about in other areas, particularly with regards to effects quality. Now, shadows are delivered at a higher resolution on PC as to be expected, so these elements do appear cleaner than on consoles and better defined. On top of that though, there are also improvements in ambient occlusion. The highest level HBAO setting on PC delivers not only greater coverage across the scene, but also produces more prominent indirect shadowing, essentially giving general environments more depth and also providing more realistic shade in areas where this is required. And there's also the use of higher precision depth of field. Notice in this scene how the depth of field produces visible halos on consoles and blurs out the outer focus elements quite heavily, whereas on PC the haloing is basically eliminated and the outer focus elements appear clearer while still remaining out of focus. Overall then, it is a noticeable upgrade on the PC. While not all these visual features will be immediately noticeable, the refinements in the core graphical artwork certainly are. Things such as faster streaming when loading in new assets from scene to scene, along with higher resolution normal maps, increased geometry, all of these things provide a more refined presentation. If you play the consoles, then move to PC, even at 1080p, the difference is pretty obvious to see and provides a better overall experience. You don't necessarily need ultra high end hardware like the Titan X to benefit. Get rid of the super sampling, stick to native 1080p and these upgrades are possible on less powerful GPUs, especially if you're going to be targeting 30fps. Alternatively, you could just target 1080p60 and get the ultimate Mass Effect experience, running far more smoothly than either console will allow. And that is perhaps the best thing about the PC version, is you can tailor the experience to your needs while getting a better than console experience. That's not to say that the console experience is bad or anything like that. There are definitely areas which could use some improvements, such as performance, but in some respects the consoles do a decent job. Image quality is one of those. In terms of PS4 versus Xbox One, the PS4 gives us a native 1080p during gameplay, while cutscenes operate at 900p instead. While on Xbox One we're looking at 900p during gameplay, and cutscenes that come in at 1344 by 756 now the cutscenes do appear ropier on Xbox One as we're looking at a resolution only just above 720p, but in terms of gameplay there isn't a huge amount of difference between them. Image quality is a touch harsher on Xbox One, but I think 900p generally works well. PS4 definitely has extra refinement though, and if you're playing on a big screen TV then this will definitely be more apparent. Outside of resolution though, there isn't really much between the two consoles. Occasionally, we see higher resolution normal apps and textures displayed at a distance on the PlayStation 4, despite the fact that the core artwork appears to be identical across both consoles. Maybe the engine is selecting lower mipmap levels due to the game running at 900p in gameplay on Xbox One compared to 1080p on PS4. It's not a major concern, but it does mean that distant scenery can appear well, a little clearer on the PlayStation 4 version. Of course, asset streaming can sometimes be problematic, with textures sometimes taking a few seconds to load, with switches in cutscenes, and indeed gameplay. The only other visual difference that I noticed on consoles is that shadow quality is slightly lower on Xbox One, where the edges of these elements appear a little softer and less refined up close. But aside from that, they are very closely matched with regards to the core art and effects work, aside from some odd normal map and texture oddities from time to time. Performance is another area where both versions are relatively similar. We've already covered this in a previous video, but to summarise, both versions target 30 frames per second and use an adaptive V-Sync, but neither are able to give us a complete 30 FPS lock and there are times where frame rates are quite heavily impacted, 
resulting in visible screen tearing on Xbox One and plenty of stutter across both consoles. Really the difference here comes down to how the adaptive V-Sync works. The tearing can be more prominent on Xbox One, appearing in the top third of the screen, while on PS4 tearing is rarely an issue at all. Instead, a lot of the stutter that appears from time to time comes from improper frame pacing. Both versions do spend a fair bit of time running at the desired 30fps, but we feel that performance could be improved and in a future patch we'd like to see things operate a bit closer to target, as when the game is running smoothly at 30fps then the experience is rather good. So overall out of the three it's definitely the PC version that provides the best all round experience, particularly due to the fact that you can customise the game towards your own hardware settings. In terms of the consoles though, well both PS4 and Xbox One are pretty similar. The use of higher resolutions on PlayStation 4 definitely gives the game an advantage when viewed on big screen HD TVs, though during gameplay the 900p on Xbox One still looks pretty good. Anyway, I think that about covers everything for now. We'll be taking a look at the PS4 Pro versus the PC versions running at 4K in another video. But for now, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.